Tri City Sports now. We got a couple of uh, real good guests to bring us out of this show. Uh, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to Bryce Ballantyne. He's the new general manager of the Elizabethan Twins, and it is a different aspect. I mean, it's a Boyd Sports, you know, conglomerate. But what can you do about Elizabethan attendance? Boyd Sports has done great things with the attendance at in Johnson City, uh, Greenville. But Elizabethan's a tougher nut to crack, let's face it. I mean, where are you drawing from? So, let's look at that. Hey, anyway, Bryce Ballantyne's going to join me here. Then you got David Strickland. He's the coach and new owner, co-owner of the Tri-Cities Otters soccer team. I'd like to ask, I mean, the Otters are doing quite well. Just coming off a tie, they've got a winning record, used to be in the bottom of the standings, now they're winning. And But I do wonder about a franchise and that is uh, playing a high school football stadium. Because there was some talk with Michael Ballath on the team that he would like to you know, take over Buffalo Valley, uh, build a soccer stadium there for the Otters, Look, you build a stadium, you're pretty stable. You build, you rent out a high school football field, maybe not. Now, that being said, Strickland is, of course, the soccer coach at Science Hill. So it would seem like as long as Strickland is at Science Hill, you've got a good thing going there. But then again, it's a football stadium. It's not a soccer field. You can convert it, but is it ideal? And that's the question there. So we'll talk about those things coming up here uh, to close out the program. But, of course, Graham Clark, i uh, got to talk about this. Graham Clark is the uh, new offensive coordinator up at Emory & Henry. Got my street in Smiths for college football yesterday. Top 25 Division three schools, Wasps weren't in it. It's really not a surprise, but remember the days when they were. Actually, with Clark, what I hear when I get that is a bunch of, you know, my antennas light up. I, I start, wait a minute here, wanting to ask questions. Um, This guy would, could have been coach for life at Dobbins Bennett. And he would be the head coach. And look, I'm always the guy that says, don't hire the head coach from high school directly for your major college program, or really your small college program. You know, But then again, becoming the assistant, that's a whole different story. Worked at Furman, could it work at e &H? Maybe. And also, what does that do for e &H to get the local player to start thinking about the Wasps, not that they ever stopped doing that, but by having such a figure as Clark, who was so successful for so long at Dobbins Bennett, maybe he didn't win any state titles, that's got to help out. You know, you'll be playing with, a respect, with uh, uh, Graham Clark. That's a good coach to play for and all that. Okay. Now let's look at the other side, though, and it's, What's going on with Dobbins Bennett? Because here's Clark, who steps down amid much fanfare. But Dobbins Bennett goes 4-6 and six this past year. Dobbins Bennett isn't the program it once was. Dobbins Bennett has been overtaken in the all-time victories list in Tennessee by Maryville. Remember, it used to be, Dobbins Bennett, the winningest high school football program in Tennessee. I once did a story on the history of Dobbins Bennett football and I mentioned that Dobbins Bennett actually had more victories in their history than the winningest football program in Texas high school football history. Think about that for a second. It's the Amarillo Sandies, by the way, if you're so inclined. Bum Phillips used to coach there. Anyway, uh, I, I but think about that for a second. But you get the idea... What's going on there, Dobbins Bennett? No, really, what's going on there, Dobbins Bennett? I mean, they're four and six last year. They're not winning like they used to. Graham Clark steps down, and then after a year, says, "Yeah, I'll return to coaching." And he gets 
a job that I think nobody would say, you know, if you were a 30-year-old head coach at Dobbins Bennett, or even 35 or 40, and you took the OC job at college, be it Emory and Henry, Emory and Henry, be it uh, Furman, be it Tennessee, be it wherever, no one's begrudging you that. Yeah, that's what you do to advance up the coaching ladder. But here's Graham Clark, who's been a head coach since the 80s. Is he really trying to move up the ladder? Or is he, you know what, I miss it, I want to get back in? Or were things at Dobbins Bennett not like they were? That's the question. You know, I found it very tight lip where Dobbins Bennett hired a coach It was Someone who even going into the weekend, nobody really expected to get the job. Flip side of that, I remember that Gerald Sensabaugh had applied. Why would you not give Gerald Sensabaugh a chance? Now, I mean, he didn't even get an interview. For 12 finalists, he wasn't one. How many players do you have that played for the Dallas Cowboys that want to come back and be your coach? And for that matter, had led Dobbins, or David Crockett to... A lot of success when he was there, even if it did end controversially for him. Don't you give him an interview? Well, they didn't at Dobbins Bennett. Hmm. really think Graham Clark becoming the offensive coordinator at Emory & Henry, that raises questions that need to be asked about what direction is Dobbins Bennett going around, or going to. Just a thought here. I mean, yeah, I'm retiring as this legendary high school coach. And the year you come back as an offensive coordinator, and yeah, you're alma mater, but still a D3 college? That seems like you got a little bit fed up with DB to me, for whatever reason. And things ain't been going all that well up there in Kingsport lately on the gridiron. I'm Marky Bilson. When we come back, Bryce Ballantyne, new general manager of the Elizabethan Twins, will join me. It's Tri-City Sports Now on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio and Jet Broadcasting.Live. The Farmer's Market Community Yard Center.